Hi, this is Margo. This is Saturday, May the 12th, 2018. And I'm going to continue uh, digging into methane and the methane forecasts along with um, some articles that I'm going to bring to you today about uh, one is about the melting permafrost another one is about Russia sending um, scientists um, to check out how things are melting up in the Arctic another one is a climate change roundup from the last 10 years and uh, and then we're going to look at climate reanalyzer again and uh, I'm hoping to bring weekly forecasts a weekly something having to do with climate change or the weather weekly if I'm able to um, these videos take an extraordinary amount of time um, so I'm hoping that I can keep keep up the pace I don't know if I can or not I'm really gonna try I do have an announcement before I get started I'm going to be doing another interview with Guy McPherson um, Dr. McPherson on May the 31st and I did an initial interview with him back in March of last year in 2017 and I'll put a link below to that interview it's on my YouTube channel and um, I contacted him by email with a question from one of uh, someone who commented on one of the videos and he responded and then in that email I asked if he would like to come back for another interview and he said he'd love to so I've got him scheduled for May the 31st and um, I'm debating on whether or not to do that as a live call-in show so that people can call in and ask their questions directly to him um, I don't know if I'd get so many trolls that it would it would not be beneficial but I'm debating on that so um, and we're gonna dig into the methane issue I've been really interested in that and trying to study up on it especially since I discovered this cams website and this is what's up on the screen right now this is um, <clears throat> Copernicus atmosphere and monitoring service and it's out of the EU and it's a combination of different uh, monitoring data and where they have stations set up around the world and um, this is very reliable uh, a very reliable system you can do a five-day forecast from their data and the climate scientists are really watching the Arctic very closely with um, with the melting uh, sea ice and the permafrost and what's coming up in the Arctic as far as methane and so I know a lot of people have questions about methane and I'm definitely not an expert I am um, I live in a studio apartment I'll be 64 years old in a couple of weeks and this is a hobby of mine but um, it's extremely close to my heart I am empathic and I can feel the pain of the earth and of what she's going through and I've been empathic all my life I didn't know what it was I can also feel other people's pains um, in my work that I do with people I'm an empathic spiritual healer and so it's um, this empathic abilities goes with the trees uh, with animals with humans with Mother Earth um, basically with anything that's conscious so um, 
it's um, that's how I got into all of this and I've kind of had a scientific mind all of my life even though um, I majored in music and I have uh, a master's degree in classical piano performance and then I got into uh, composition and um, all the music that you hear on my videos is uh, my original my original music that I've composed and recorded on my own uh, from years and years ago so I'm a Gemini so I have a lot of different interests and but right now my big interest is abrupt climate change and I think this is very important as we head into especially this summer this summer is going to be a real tipping point a lot of climate scientists are predicting that we will have an ice-free Arctic this summer and if we do then the uh, runaway uh, climate disasters are, and all the feedback loops are going to just start going like dominoes and Guy McPherson um, in some of his latest interviews he doesn't think that many humans will be left at all within the next year or so. So we're going to be talking about that too. So in your comment section below, if you have questions that you'd like for me to ask of Dr. McPherson in my upcoming interview, you can put them in the comment section below. Or if you're interested in having the live call-in show where you're able to call in and ask him questions directly, put that in the comments so that I can uh, kind of know how to proceed on this. Because um, I'm leery about doing a live call-in show just because of there's so much controversy um, around him and uh, there are a lot of people who don't like him and and uh, I'm I'm just afraid that I'd get a bunch of trolls on there and I mean I can handle trolls I just don't want to be wasting our precious time you know with with nonsense callers and things like that so any feedback that you would like to leave below um, it, it would be appreciated but I do monitor the comments and um, I don't approve comments that are of a really negative nature or um, and I've had death threats um, my life changed once I interviewed Guy McPherson which was over a year ago and my life totally changed so but I I think um, that he's telling the truth and he's one of the few climate scientists out there that is telling the truth and um, is is in a position to where he can tell the truth because he's not employed by a government agency so um, you know the the climate scientists who are employed by a government agency they might be more conservative about what they're sharing but they all know the truth so um, I've got the CAMS website up and we're looking down at the North Pole and this is a wide view and we can get closer in a, in a minute here and this is just an overview in case people have not been to this website before this is a website that people can go to and uh, monitor and uh, do their own forecasts and see what's going on all over the world and this is my new favorite website and I come to it daily to see what's going on so um, here's an overview of the website and um, <clears throat> the latest data is from Thursday May the 10th and we can choose the area here and the level, we're at surface level here 
and we're, we've got methane at surface level and the little tick marks down here are at every three hour increments and the time is UTC time, universal time code and the colors down here these are the levels of methane in the atmosphere so you can see that most of the colors in the Arctic start with a chartreuse color about at this level which is about at um, 1880 to 1900 and then when you get into the yellow levels that's at 1920 this is parts per billion this is how it's measured it's right here methane at surface parts per billion and um, then when you get up into the reds then you're at about 2,000 uh, on and over parts per billion. This or orangey orange, like that color, that's um, 1980. And then the red, the bright red is 2,000. The uh, Next, next darker red is 2020. The darker red is 2040 parts per billion, like up here. And then the, almost this black color is 75,600 parts per billion. And you find that a lot over India and over um, the Eastern Asia countries like China and you'll you'll see when we make the movie this black color comes up all over the place and um, so methane is not only coming up out of the ocean in fact it normally doesn't it comes up off the land because it comes from the land from uh, decomposing uh, trees and plants and things like that and also from fracking. I did in my first video on methane I go into all the different places where methane comes from. It comes from natural gas. Um, in fact methane is is natural gas. It is lighter than air. So um, I, I'll show you all of that in a minute um, about it being lighter than air. It is combustible, flammable, um, so it, it can heat up the atmosphere. So as it comes up it's gonna it's another self-reinforcing feedback loop so it keeps heating the atmosphere more and more and the more it heats up the more it's released. That's called a self-reinforcing feedback loop. So we're gonna make the movie for the Arctic. I just clicked on that button and it's got to load up and it's going to go for five days into Monday the 14th and then we'll watch the movie go and see how the Arctic is doing okay here it goes And you can see uh, the whole northern hemisphere from this viewpoint. It's a really good view. <clears throat> you can see how the northern part of India is totally covered up. When it gets deeper like that, it's during the daytime. And then at night it goes down. And so when it gets lighter over on the right side of the world it gets darker on the left side of the world because it's day on the opposite side
Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to look at a couple of different areas, or more than a couple of different areas, quite a few. This area is of concern. Look at how uh, Europe and England gets covered up with the methane, and at some points it's coming up here, this is Norway, and it's coming up in the ocean. Um, see, see, it coming up there, and some some of the climate scientists don't know if it's really being released from the ocean, or if the wind currents are carrying the methane from the land out over the ocean. So that's one of the questions I'm going to ask Guy McPherson because it's just unknown right now. And one uh, I did read uh, somebody thought that on the edges, like on the coastlines, that there's a lot of sediment, and as it's warming up, the sediment is it's got biological material in it that's decomposing and could be releasing methane on the coastlines and that that could be what what's happening especially like look at Alaska here's Alaska see it's got methane <clears throat> along the coastlines well and in in the center too because it's got a lot of permafrost Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to pause that, and now we're going to get a closer look at the Arctic, and then we're going to look around the world. Of interest, the climate scientists have really been watching this area just north of Russia. This is Russia here. And this is Siberia. There's a, a lot of permafrost here. You can see methane being released from that area and here. And this is, I forget the name of that island. Here it is. Here's a map of Russia. It's um, Novaya Zim Zimlie. That's the island that uh, that is of great interest, and we've got the Kara Sea to the east of that island, and the Barents Sea to the west of that island. And according to the CAMS website, there they've been showing methane coming up out of the ocean to the east of that island and to the west of the island and coming up off the coast here of Russia and so that's been of concern so we're going to look at that another area of concern is over here here's Norway is uh, methane coming up in the North Sea and coming up past Norway and it's actually coming off of Europe and England too. So that's of interest. And <clears throat> anyone who studies methane will know about the Laptev Sea, which is further east. And this is northern Siberia. And then the East Siberian Sea. And of interest is the East Siberian Ice Shelf, which is over here. And um, they're worried that as, as the temperatures warm, that ice shelf is going to crack and melt. And there's a whole bunch of methane stored um, underneath there. And that we could have a methane bomb going off. <clears throat> So let's go back and let's make our movie for the North Pole.
or the Arctic again <clears throat> as we have a closer view and look at these areas now Okay, now it's going. Okay, you can see, you can see here's that island, and you can see the methane in the ocean coming up. Look at that. See, right there. See, it just is bursting up, and it's off the coast there. I'll move my pointer so you can see it. And it's that dark red. So that's a pretty high level. And then here's Norway and um, here's you've got methane just popping up out of the ocean. You can tell that's coming up out of the ocean. That's not flowing like off land. Sometimes when it flows you can see like a trail but like the yellow is trailing that's like a trail I'm thinking but where it's popping up like that I'm thinking that's coming up out of the ocean look the Norway's just covered up with it and then you've got Alaska and see here, there's an example of trailing see watch that watch the red when it comes back around. See, that's I think that's an example of trailing right there <clears throat> where the the wind is moving it cuz it is light. It's lighter than air, so it would be higher up um once it comes up from the surface, it would trail pretty quickly I would think but that's another question we can ask Guy McPherson so I'm starting my list of questions for him <coughs> <coughs> and if you'd like to zoom in you can hit control and the plus sign and that will make the map larger and you can do that a couple of times and get even more detail so let's run the movie again at the larger view now you can really see see here's the coastline and you can Here's, here's England, there's Norway, here's uh, Europe, here. And you can see it popping up in the ocean there. And you can see it popping up over here. And you can see it, this is Siberia where it's just like constant. Here's Canada. It's got a lot of permafrost. And as we go into summer, these colors are going to get more red. And parts of the uh, parts of the world are not as red as they were last week. I'm thinking because we have a little bit cooler temperatures. It is cooler. Uh, where I live, um, but we we hit 91. I live in uh, northern Nevada, in the U.S., and we hit 91 last Monday. That was like 20 degrees higher than normal, higher than average. <clears throat> Pause that, and I'm going to go back to our regular view. I'm going to hit the plus. I mean the control sign and the minus key 
a couple of times. Go back to our normal view. Yeah, we set a record on Monday and now it's the high today is going to be 60 something or 70 so that's about normal this time of year for us <clears throat> so let's go um, <clears throat> I want to go to the North Atlantic view and we can get a, a better view we can get a really good view of Norway and England and what's going on over here and what's coming off of Canada over here. This is going to be a good view. So let's load our movie. And, you know, for so long, everybody has been focused on um, carbon dioxide. And that's up. That's way up. And, you know, that's all you hear about is carbon dioxide. But methane is the killer, the big, big killer, mixed with the carbon dioxide. And, you know, it's just not a good mix. It's just really cutting off the oxygen in the atmosphere. All right, that was interesting. Of course, that was back on Thursday, this area here. And you can see this. I'm thinking that this is the trailing, this yellow. See how it's moving across the ocean? Um, that's probably with the jet stream because it it, it moves pretty fast up there <coughs> but you can see here see it popping up off the coast of Norway and popping up over here and we don't know if that's from methane just coming up out of the ocean there or if it's from offshore drilling or what. Now look how it just pops up over England and Europe. I mean it's just covered so that's not good either. Okay that was interesting. Now let's go to North America. We'll get an overview of the different parts of the world here. Actually, instead of that, <coughs> we'll let that load anyway. Hopefully it will load. taking its time. Sometimes I can't get this website to work and you know I think they might be uh, up, uh, you know uploading new data or doing maintenance on the website or they might have a lot of visitors to the website which is why it might not be loading. Yeah, see, dismiss. Okay, I might have to come back on and do some more. Um, let's see if I can reload that. Just get it reloaded. Okay, we're back. All right. <clears throat> um, 
What was I going to show you? Oh, I remember the West Tropic. There we go. That's what I wanted to show you. You got the whole western side of the world with South America and North America. Now this is a really good view. We can get it all at once. Now let's see if this will load our movie. <clears throat> it's going to be a long hot summer folks. It's only May 12th. Look. And the Earth is starting to, uh, the Northern Hemisphere is starting to tilt more towards the Sun. And so as it does, the Southern Hemisphere is less hot. And so what you're seeing here is that South America is not as red as last week. If you go back and look at my video from last week, South America is not as red. I know these uh, these are non-scientific terms, but that's what how I can understand it. So it means it's cooler down there. And um and it's cooler in 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 the United States this week too. In parts of the United States it's a lot cooler over here in Nevada. Okay. So there's that. So that was <clears throat> that view was the west Tropic. Now let's look at East Tropic. We'll get the whole eastern side of the world. Almost, almost everything, the eastern side. And Africa, in the Congo, they've they're releasing lots and lots of methane. It's in that center part. Uh, right near the equator. So I'm going to be interested to see how these levels change as we go into fire season and get into really hot weather. Now see here's the Congo. That's not nearly as pronounced as last week. Last week it was a lot bigger <clears throat> that area there. And um, yeah, China is less, Asia is less, India is less. So I think it was just overall quite a bit cooler. But down here these islands they've still got a lot. But you know the equator is right along here. Right along there is the equator. So that's where you're going to have hotter temperatures too. Well, just depending. It's going to be really hot up here as, as it tilts more towards the sun. Okay. Now let's look at <coughs> now you can change these filter results now what's cool is um, these are loaded all these different filters you can look at these are all um, see here's fire activity UV index sulfur dioxide particulate matter ozone forecast nitrous nitrogen dioxide, methane, formaldehyde, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, aerosol forecast. 
So you've got all those filters already uploaded. Somebody already did this work and saved those filters. So it's a lot easier just to go in bookmark it and every day I go to the latest update in bookmark it. So now let's look at carbon dioxide. And let's look at global. <coughs> Okay, now this is what the climate scientists are up in arms about. Now these, this is parts per million. Here's your chart down here. And see down in the lower hemisphere, it's more yellowy. And here's like blue, almost blue-green. But the, the whole world the whole world is above this 400 and something the whole world and okay this is a little bit darker it's hard to tell by the scale maybe um okay two uh, three four five six this is okay. So maybe 405 way way down here. Um, and but look up at the northern hemisphere. It's so much higher in the northern hemisphere. It's shocking when you really get the global view and see the difference between the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere. And the line goes right here. That's the equator. Right there. And um, I'm going to show you, uh-oh, browser crashed. This is what happens. I'm going to have to pause this movie and come back to it. I will be back short. Okay, I'm back and I had to reboot my computer because my browser just wouldn't work. I had to reload all my nine tabs that I've got up and um, eight or nine tabs. I don't know how many I have. So, as I was saying about carbon dioxide, you know, that's the big, big one, the big greenhouse gas we've been hearing about all this time and look at the northern hemisphere how much higher it is in carbon dioxide than the southern hemisphere and it's right here at the equator it's almost the cutoff point and it just is so much higher and I'm thinking it's because of the industrialized world and Carbon dioxide is heavier than air, and so it's it's closer to the ground than air. And so when you have that much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it's going to make it harder to breathe, and um, it's going to affect everything. And it's also going to heat up the planet more. So um, I have couple of things I want to show you. This website is the Keeling Curve and this is from May the 10th of 2018 and this is the carbon dioxide concentration at Mauna Loa Observatory and it was 411.93 parts per million and Mauna Loa, that's Hawaii. So, and then, but if you go back to our CAMS website, 411, and so that's Mauna Loa, 
so Hawaii's out here in the Pacific Ocean somewhere and so 411 there's 410 so 411 is there but most most of the northern hemisphere is higher than that even so if you or if like look at this part of Africa and look at this part um you know over the ocean here and um uh, India it comes up India and then southern Asia and look up here it's way way worse it's in these dark dark realms of 418 parts per million and the darkest on this scale here is a thousand parts per million that's like almost black that would be like here and you know there are websites I've seen websites where they say in Beijing the air is too bad to breathe and in certain parts of Asia you know people are just keeling over and they're so sick because they just can't breathe the air is so bad and so if you look in the northern hemisphere most of it is in this orange area here um, at 4 13 to 414 parts per million so there you go there's that and I'm going to share another document I found this has to do with um, different kinds of noxious gases that you'll find in the air and this is from the Fermilab website it was from their um, materials handling uh, manual <clears throat> from December of 2016 and this is just a word document that I downloaded atmospheric testing and this will give you an idea of the how dense these different um, noxious gases are and here's methane it's a combustible gas and it's lighter than air so it's going to go to the top above air hydrogen sulfide is slightly heavier than air carbon monoxide is slightly lighter than air um, then you've got helium and um, <clears throat> these these are all gases that are lighter than air uh, acetylene ammonia ammonia carbon monoxide ethylene helium hydrogen methane and nitrogen those are all lighter than air and here are gases that are heavier than air and here's the percentage heavier argon butane carbon dioxide so you see carbon dioxide is different from carbon monoxide so carbon dioxide is what we're talking about chlorine ethane hexane hydrogen sulfide methyl ethyl ketone methyl mercaptan nitrogen dioxide nitrogen oxide and then you've got oxygen propane propylene and sulfur dioxide so um, those tables I found helpful to kind of get in perspective <coughs> what the different gases are and what's lighter than air and what's heavier than air because they're going to go in layers when you're talking about the atmosphere so when you're talking about the atmosphere and in these layers 
you've got carbon dioxide that's heavier than air so it's going to be closer to the earth and then you've got oxygen or the air and then you've got all these other different noxious gases and stuff that are listed over here so it would be in layers and then methane is lighter so it's not a good combo plate folks so I'm just gonna leave that up <clears throat> <clears throat> And now I want to go to melting permafrost. Here's an article that I found from City Lab. And I'm going to put links to all these websites down below. This article is from May the 18th, 2018. It's called The Race to Save Arctic Cities as Permafrost Melts. I'm not going to read this whole article, but if you want to read it, you can just go to the link and read it. But this is how serious this melting permafrost is. It's whole cities that have been built on the permafrost because the idea was it was permanent it was frost and it wasn't going to melt but it says as the ground shifts beneath their feet officials in Canada's Nunavut turn turn to creative engineering to save scarce homes and plan for a future built on bedrock in Russia buildings are sagging and crumbling in Greenland, a wildfire broke out last year, and in Alaska, entire villages may be relocated because the land upon which they're built is no longer trustworthy. All across the north, the very ground is changing, and the buildings and roads built upon the thawing permafrost are shifting and cracking. In Ickel Iqaluit, I don't know how to say that, the capital of the Canadian territory, Nunavut, a good home is hard to find. An efficiency apartment runs around $2,000 a month, wow, while a two-bedroom house will cost about $3,500 a month. These New York prices are shocking in a small remote town of about 7,500 people, and there still aren't enough homes for everyone. That's something. Then it goes on and on, um, <clears throat> saying, you know, there are homeless people there, and this and that. Um, <clears throat> but they're talk here they're talking about the thaw. Permafrost is any stretch of ground including soil and bedrock that remains frozen for two years or more. The top layer, the active layer, freezes and thaws with the seasons, but the layer beneath stays at zero degrees Celsius for multiple years. Or it's supposed to, anyway, as temperatures soar and snow blankets the earth in new weather patterns, even permafrost that's been around for thousands of years is beginning to give way. The landscape of the Arctic is changing more than it has since the end of the last ice age. So there you go. You can see all around the globe. This is um, Canada. Here's Alaska. Here's Greenland. And here's uh, Europe. And then Russia. Siberia. See where it's blue, it's all melting, <clears throat> it's warming up. Those are the land masses that are in danger, and it's a lot. Anyway, it's making the permafrost thaw. I've done some shows on this, 
um, it's happening really quickly. They're trying to put buildings on legs. Greenland is getting wildfires. Um, the water is warmer. Here's a picture of a building that's built on legs to adjust to the permafrost that melts. Because even just a little bit of melt can cause havoc in a foundation, obviously. Um, mapping the permafrost hazard, etc., etc. So, you've got problems up there. And it's not just the buildings, but the whole infrastructure is in danger. You've got plumbing, you've got gas, you've got water, sewer, you know, all those things are in danger wherever the permafrost is melting. The next article I want to share with you is from TASS. It's a Russian news agency and this is from May 3rd of this year, 2018. And it says Russian scientists to start Arctic expedition in the fall. A group of scientists who study the Siberian Arctic shelf as a source of greenhouse gases in fall will head for an expedition on board the academic Mistilov Keldish research vessel to the Laptev and East Siberian Seas, the Tomsk University's press service told TASS. Now let's look at the world map, the Russian map, and see exactly where that is. Okay, here's the Laptev Sea, and here's the East Siberia Sea. So it's going up here into those areas. <clears throat> it would be the first time that the research complex will include layers of studies in geology, geophysics, bio geochemistry, meteorology, and space from the sediments to precipitation surf surface across the water into the atmosphere. Uh, the press service quoted Professor Igor Similatov as saying, and he's, he's one of the big ones about the um, melting Siberian east, east, um, ice shelf. According to the scientists, this approach is necessary to make climate models which have never counted on methane emissions from the East Arctic seas, whereas they are bigger than in any other areas of the world ocean. This is fairly short. Um says that this, these expeditions would be annual and the expedition in 2018 would be jointly with the Victor Ilichev Pacific Studies Institute. The expedition's target areas would be in the Laptev and in the East Siberian Seas where since 2008 scientists have been watching methane emissions. Earlier, the Russian government extended the two years, for two years, a mega grant for research of the underwater permafrost degradation in the Arctic, which causes growing greenhouse gas emissions. Scientists hope to be able to forecast climate changes as a result of studying those processes. During Arctic expeditions, scientists have confirmed the permafrost big degradation. The current situation is that the big cork, which would have stopped the gas hydrates, is leaking now. Through those fractions in the underwater permafrost, methane from the sediment layers is rising as high as the atmosphere. 
that's warming it up. And that's the end of that article. And we saw that. We saw that on the CAMS website. And now, here's another article. Um, I'm just going to do an overview. This is from May 7th of 2018 from Counterpunch. And it's a climate change 10-year checkup. And it's just comparing from 10 years ago where we were to where we are um, not even now. Because this... It's not even, some of it is to now, but um, it's just an overview of how much worse things have gotten um, in 10 years. <clears throat> uh, okay. Ten years later, unfortunately, the worst case scenario hasn't missed a beat and may be worse than expected. And everybody's saying it's worse than we thought, happening faster than we thought, and all this. <clears throat> Carbon dioxide. In 2008, it was at 387 parts per million. And now... As we saw, it's at 411, almost 412 parts per million, right there. And that was in Hawaii, where it's not even as bad as further north. So, in 10 years, it's gone up that much. And look at this, May 2nd of 2018, the Scripps Institution of Ocean Oceanography, Mauna Loa, uh, read the CO2 at 408.9 parts per million. But look at this. I just have this reading from May the 10th at 411.93 parts per million. So... You know, they're, it's worse. It's worse than what they're saying. <clears throat> it's wor getting worse faster and faster. <clears throat> and here the ocean is turning over less, etc., etc. Here's the Arctic with the sea ice melt. <clears throat> it's losing its infrastructure. Greenland with the ice sheets melting off Greenland, the glaciers are melting, Antarctica is heating up, etc., etc. So if you want to see how things have changed in the last 10 years, this is a good overview. The permafrost, etc., etc. So, people can go to that website too. We're getting kind of long. I didn't intend for this show to be so long. But here's your Climate Reanalyzer website. <clears throat> and this is a really good website to go to. And you can check out um, your all your different weather maps. Today's weather map. This is at 2 meters temperature. And look at the temperatures for today, Saturday, May 12th, 2018. You can see up here in the Arctic, it's, war it's really warming up. It's really warming up. Green is above freezing the zero is the, the blue the blue and then green is above freezing here's your temperature anomalies and 
This is the difference. See, you can see on the right hand side here, this is 10 degrees Celsius. You can see areas of the Arctic that are 10 degrees higher than normal and all over the world. But look at here, look at here in Canada, here in Siberia. It's really it's heating up. You can check your snow depths here. Not very deep on the snow <coughs> at all. There's no snow here. Here is Norway. Here's the North Atlantic going up there. Here's that little island that we were talking about. And there's snow there. But there's methane coming up through the snow and the ice. Okay, so that's what you've got. And then we can go back <coughs> and we can go to our Outlook. Let's go to the World <coughs> Temperature Outlook. Average and Maximum. Maximum for the globe. There you go. It's not looking good. It's going to be hot. This is for a three day, three day forecast. See? There you go. And you've got your scale down here. 40. It's at some of these areas or at almost 40 degree well 40 and higher degrees centigrade celsius and here um here's celsius over here uh i didn't get the website i wanted um anyway not looking good. Like 40. Let's convert. Uh, 40. Well, let's go. Well, anyway, I didn't get the website I wanted there. You get the idea. It's hot. It's really hot. Anyway, I didn't get the website I wanted when I reloaded everything. But, there you have it. <clears throat> 40 degree is like, I think it's around 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's only May 12th. So that's my show for today. My name is Margo. My website is margoshealingcorner.com. I'm a hypnotist, holistic life coach, empathic spiritual healer. Time is short. I think our days are numbered. And I encourage everyone to get their spiritual house in order. Whatever that means for you. And get ready to exit the planet. Until next, next time, take care. God bless and goodbye.